What are you just trying to, to work on these last few practices you got before a real thing gets going here? Um, keep, keep cleaning up our concepts, uh, making sure that we're, our focus is um, you know, defensively, making sure we're tight on everything, our rotations, our principles, still tweaking different lineups and you know, getting positionless groups on the floor, small groups on the floor together, getting groups that have traditional fives and just kind of seeing what it looks like. I know how much you've valued defense these, these since you've been the head coach, and I mean you guys have been a top ten defense the past few years. If you if you play a lot of these small lineups, like, can you be an elite defense again if you're just going small a bunch? Yeah, for sure, um, and that's that's uh, what we're excited to see. Is um, I don't have the, I don't necessarily have the answers that is a guarantee, but we, that's what we're working towards. We're working towards continuously having a good defense no matter who we put on the floor and um, when those units are on the floor they have to under have an understanding that we have to be tougher we have to play harder we have to compete at a higher level we have to rebound at a high level in order for those type of groups to work I, I guess what I'm getting at is when you go small it's, I mean it seems like it, it helps your offense but it takes away from the defense is that is that the right way of looking at it or no well last year our, our numbers was actually our offense got better and our defense. And so we became a better defensive team uh, because we could just keep guys in front of us. We were switching multiple screens. Um, we were getting deflection steals. And then we were getting tra easy transition shots, which allowed us to set our defense again. So, you know, analytically, it, it kind of worked in our favor. But you, you have to force the issue with, with those type of scenarios. What role do you see Javante playing with this group, especially knowing how much you've relied on guys like Najee and Dyson in the past? Very similar to to Naj and, and Dyson, um, strong, athletic, uh, his ability to be able to guard multiple positions. He's a solid rebounder and, and high IQ player, very intelligent. So he would assume a role similar to what those guys did for us. It seemed like there was a little difficulty in getting the pace to where you wanted it in the preseason. Are there things that you want to implement defensively to increase the tempo and maybe put teams in a, in a more um, awkward position and give your guys who have that ability like DeJounte, Herb, who can roam and make plays in, when the ball's in the air, do you want to try to create more of those opportunities? Yes, for sure. We want to create a little bit more havoc, uh, allow Herb and DeJounte to use their instincts to you know, go make plays for us defensively. When we can get deflections and steals, rebound the ball, we get out in the open floor and we're playing some of our best basketball. Now we have to convert on those opportunities and that's something that we didn't do a, a great job in uh, in preseason. So we got open looks. Um, you know, we, we got to knock them down. Is that, is that the tough part in generating the looks? Like you got shots that you wanted, but you didn't make shots, which makes it kind of hard to do the things that you want to do defensively. Uh, uh, you know, how, how much can you control with that? Do you feel like you got the right shots out of the offense that you wanted to see or the right people always taking the shots? How much of that are you trying to balance in these last few practices? Yes, I, I feel like we got the right shots and we want to continue to show what those shots look like and how to get them, if that makes sense. So it's not just I swung the ball to you and you just shoot it. It's a domino has to fall. I have to catch it in transition and drive the ball, collapse the defense. That's a kick out, catch and shoot, open three. A good screen, pocket pass, defense collapse, kick out. Now I got open threes. And then on top of that, it's not just the open threes, but now it's another domino. Same scenario, I shot fake, bring the defense to me, I'm driving closeouts, finishing at the rim, or once again, more kickouts for catch and shoot shots. So it's, it's the way, the processes of getting those shots. And we felt like we had a good number of quality looks. Now it's doubling down on the processes of getting there. And we were joking about the starting lineup yesterday. You think that's something you're going to keep to yourself all the way up to the first game, or that's something you kind of decide at some point and let out? Um, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hopefully, I can get to that before the first game, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Honestly, I, you know, I don't, want you to, I don't want you to hold me to something. <laughs> and then come, you know, Monday or Tuesday, I, I don't have an answer for you. So I'm going to hold off on that. And We'd never do that. 
No, we would never. <laughs> Coach, you said that on <laughs> Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> when is the media? Yeah, I would have done that. I'm going to have an answer for you Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> Monday or Tuesday come. We coming knocking you on say, Monday. Guess what? <laughs> Coach, you said you was going to have an I don't have an answer. Now. So, no, nah, I can't give it to you yet. <laughs> hey, I respect that. But uh, do you kind of still feel the same way as far as it, it's something that can shift during the course of the season where based on matchup, you might go a different direction, you know, from one game to the next? I do. Um, it, it's something that – you know, we, we have to take a good look at. We have to do it in games and see how we how it looks. And that could change based on the results. We, we're not getting the results or we're not necessarily um, accomplishing what we want to. Or it could look great and we stick with certain groups, certain matchups, certain um, opportunities. But I think it can, it can change throughout the course of the season because, you know, you're going to have some matchups where, you know, we may not be able to play uh, a ton of small ball in, in those games. You may have to go a little bit bigger. So we got to – I have to leave, have some flexibility uh, with our group this season, which is unique. It hadn't been like that in the past. Mm -hmm. Well, in that game against Houston, you guys really struggled to score inside the paint, especially in that first yeah. half. And yeah. with no Zion, how much more important does it make – I know it's got to be the whole team doing it, but how much more important is it for Brandon to honestly attack the rim? I saw after practice yesterday he was really working on, you know, trying to score at the rim up against, you know, JB and several other of the staffers. Yeah, it's, it's extremely important uh, for BI and for us as a group collectively to understand that that's a big part of, you know, creating quality shots. It's if you can get to the rim and then finishing at a high level or making a great decision once you get there, if the defense is rotated to you, somebody should be open knowing where, where the open man is. So without Zion, without Trey, right, you lose a, you lose a major percentage of your rim Capabilities and so collectively, we still it's just something we have to work on anyway as a group. Uh, a team that can win the paint battle uh, is dynamic. And would you say that kind of lends into them? Maybe Brandon's going to play a slightly different role this year, where because he's six nine, right? He's one of your tallest guys. He's going to be asked to maybe play like more at the four, say per se, more positions that he normally hasn't played in the past. You know what? When, once it's the perimeter is is all a lot the same now. You know. Two, three, four. They play. They, they have similar roles. They do similar, have similar concepts on the floor. Uh, so when he's on a perimeter, he'll it'll be pretty similar to what he's always done. Um, what we're asking him to do more is take some threes, get to the rim, get to the free throw line, and hopefully that'll that'll continue to create quality looks for our whole team. Did right. you just, go ahead. How do you adjust? You know, you don't have that traditional post presence when things are going you know rough offensively to be able to throw it down and just settle it down for a possession or two how do you create maybe in those latter halves of the, of the, of the shot clock when you need to get something easy yeah we, we'll have to settle the gym down and throw it to Zion a little bit in the post or a little bit live catch at the elbow have him survey survey the floor and be able to attack we can also throw the ball down to be at times in those areas uh, to settle the gym down some. So, you know, we lose that with Jonas. Uh, but, you know, hopefully we can make up for it in other areas. Has, has Jordan showed you enough in the preseason in the camp where he's going to this, the regular season saying he's a no doubt about it rotation guy? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's shown, him, he's shown us all that he's ready to step up and have a, a bigger role on this team. Um, we knew that when we drafted him that he was going to probably help us uh, a bit his rookie season, which he did. He had a really good season, and now just taking another step forward. And that's what we want from all of our guys is you come in this program, we want you to be able to continue to progress, um, you know, first as young men, but also as uh, as professional basketball players, which they're, we're still doing. You're creeping up on the, the deadline for Trey with his extension, and obviously you're not so involved with those talks, but how much do you kind of view him as an essential part of the foundation you guys are building? Over? Yeah, Trey is a he's he's a key component to our team. Um, high, high character young man. Um, we love, you know, what he brings to this group on the basketball floor. His ability to shoot the ball, six nine, six ten, rebound, go up and finish. He's a, he's becoming a really good defender. So he he really helps this group, and he's he's one of the sort of pillars of our organization right now of our young team. So. We're we're uh, definitely hopeful that you know, we can we can all come to some agreement soon. Every year it feels like injuries are you know the thing that everybody wants to talk about. 
And certainly you say, well, if Zion plays 70, if Brandon plays 70, do you think about with the small ball lineups and the physicality that guys have to play up against, how do you manage maybe Herb's minutes? How do you manage guys in their matchups and making sure that they're ready at game 70, game 80 of the season? Yeah, but, you know, we don't know yet. We don't know what that's going to look like, but, um, you know, that's why these guys come in and they prepare. They prepare uh, with nutrition. They prepare prepare and performance and strength training, and they get on the floor and they work at it. We know that their numbers, are, their minutes are going to go up once the season starts, and so we'll monitor. We'll, we'll take, keep taking a look and see if we see some trends that we have to you know, be aware of, but right now it's, it's really about a, just – preparing to attack our opponents. And a lot of times we talk about what you guys are building here. A lot of that is based on on the court, but a lot of that is based off the court, right? The way guys fit together, chemistry, personalities, all that stuff. How much do you think Trey kind of exemplifies what you guys want to build here as far as locker room stuff? For sure. Trey, we, we love Trey. We love Trey, his family, his teammates. Um, they all love him. And, you know, it's a genuine connection. That's not something that is, is uh, made up and, you know, we're just telling you all something that Trey is, is beloved here and, you know, obviously it's the contractual, that's the business part of it that we want to all come to a, a place where everybody's comfortable. But as far as the Trey, the human being, you couldn't ask for a better young man to come in your program and to impact this community and to impact you know, his teammates and people every time he steps in here. I can, I can sit here and talk about Trey for, you know, an hour or more about, you know, the type of person he is. And so um, that's important. It's important that you we bring in people like him because they hope they help, you know, build a, a true foundational uh, culture. How important is a good start for this season? I mean, that's been a, a struggle for this team each of the last three years. How do you, this 10 game, these first 10 games are just some really difficult opponents. Yeah. Uh, it's important. Start is important. You know, every game this season, you guys know, like the, the West is going to be is going to be a challenge in the West. So we're excited about it. We look forward to what this season is going to bring. Um, it'll have its triumphs I'm sh for sure. We'll celebrate that, and it'll have moments of improvements. Uh, but you know, we like our group, and I I'm excited to get to it. So how you feeling just about uh, where the team's at defensively, especially when y'all are playing some of these smaller units? Uh, you know, just got to have that. Uh, dog mentality, you know, um, being smaller, you know, you know, our guys gonna try to out, um, out rebound us. So you know, we gotta focus on that while we are small, and you know, just on the defensive side, just being more physical, like on the ball, you know, switching up and just attacking the ball to make the ball handlers uncomfortable and make their job harder. What's How your, important is it when you guys are smaller for everybody to kind of chip in on the boards and not kind of, you know, wanting to leak out and stuff like that for everybody to get involved? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, like I said, I think uh, that's the most important part when we're smaller, you know, the, the rebounding aspect because, you know, the teams can try to out-rebound us and crash more because we're smaller. So I think we'll be uh, the focus on that and then uh, everything else will fall in place. What's your sense of how much switching there will be um, with this defense this year? Uh, I, I just feel like that's the NBA period. You know, NBA, we switch, uh, switch a lot here. Uh, and, you know, we got multiple guys that can go one through five. So I feel like uh, that switching aspect will, will favor us in the long run. As uh, somebody that prides himself on defense, I was wondering from afar or as an opposing player, what did you think of Herb as far as going against him? Yeah, I mean, Herb is exceptional, you know, um, in the accolade. He won last year is a testament to how hard he plays on the defensive end. You know, I think um, just being there and watching him every day is going to make everybody here better. You know, um, it was a play today. He was in one corner. You know, he's in a gap, and he and he uh, make an effort to contest in the opposite corner. And like, you know, just stuff like that I see every day, and just the effort that he brings every day. You know, I think it's exceptional and, and it's great. You played for the Bulls. And now you guys are preparing for them for that season opener. What, have you brought any insight about some of those guys who you got to compete with last year? Uh, when, when it comes time to it, I think I can uh, bring it out. Um, I mean, we haven't, we've been focused on that stuff right now. So I think uh, once we start focusing on them, we will bring a lot of um, insight into how they play. You know, I feel like, uh, you know, I watched them a little this year and I feel like they, the style of play is the same. You know, they still have a uh, majority guys back, you know, stuff they're losing DeMar and stuff like that. Um, but just, just knowing the principles and the concepts here, and I feel like the game plan is going to cover itself.
you got who added some more shooting to your game last year from distance. That's obviously a big emphasis for this team this year, getting to that 40 point, uh, 40 attempt mark. How, when you, when you make that shift as a player, how hard is it when that maybe wasn't the focus of your game at one point to make the three point shot an emphasis? Uh, you know, just, you know, just getting that, the knowledge that I need, you know, um, being in uh, the things that I need to fix on my jump shot, and then just, uh, just putting in that work, you know, um, Obviously, uh, coming through college, you know, it wasn't really like needed, you know, and things like that. And um, just going in the league and just trying to progress and get better each year. And um, that's what I needed to do. So that's what I focus on in summer and you know, every practice. Your former teammate, uh, Lonzo Ball, was able to finally get back in the court in the preseason. Looks like he's trending towards playing. I mean, what was that like just seeing him finally get back in the court after all he's been through these past few years? Yeah, man, that was a. It was a great feeling for me. I know it's a great feeling for him. You know, after seeing like what he been through and how like one in one injury led to another, and then just seeing him in the summer, just seeing how hard he was working. Uh, man, it was just it was just a great feeling to see him up there, just going up and down. You know, making shots and stuff like that. You know, Lonzo is a great guy, and I wish him nothing but the best. So, about you looking at this roster, it's kind of obvious that you're going to play and guard a lot of forwards, the opposing forwards on the team. What is your mindset, especially your approach, when you're going against guys that are usually bigger, whether it's height and or size, weight? Uh, you know, just using what, what, the, uh, like, uh, what the coach uh, what coach wanted me to use. You know, just if, if I'm faster than the next player, you know, just using trying to outsmart them, beat them to the spot, stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, talented, talented guys in the NBA. You know, and just it's, it's sometimes you just get up, get lucky if they miss, or you get lucky if you get a stop. But, you know, just by, out there just playing hard. Just do what you came here to do. Yeah, you've tallied a lot of steals and blocks so far in your career. Do you give that more of a credit to your instincts? Do you do any, like, any special game preparation ahead of time? Well, no, not really. You know, just, just going out there and just, like I said, just playing as hard as I can and just trying to use uh, what got me here to, to excel. That's all.